want to provide a quick update to the video I just produced on the Zephyr Extra, or I'm sorry, the uh, Zephyr Express uh, DCS 52 uh, starter set, DCC starter set from Digitrax. If you watch my introduction video, there's two things I want to bring attention to. The first one is in the video, I wanted to demonstrate how the USB connects the computer directly to the DCS 52. Um, and I wasn't able to successfully do that in, in the first video. Um, after about 15 minutes of troubleshooting, I was able to figure it out, and I'll talk through that in a minute. Second thing I'll want to talk about is in my initial video, I deleted it out, but there was an issue with function 9 working correctly on this command station. Uh, I had an intermountain locomotive, and I uh, enabled function 9, which should have been the drive hold and it didn't behave as it should have. So um, I'm gonna talk about that. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to apply the power to the Zephyr Express, and we'll see that start up here. So that's going through its startup command. Have just a standard uh, USB cable again does not come with the Zephyr Express, but it's um, basically this is a printer cable. So it just has USB port on one end, a square um, port on the other end. We'll just go ahead and connect this to the back of the command station. And then we'll go ahead and connect it to the USB drive on the computer. When you have successfully connected it, you can see there's an actual USB indicator on the display screen of the, the DCS-52. Okay, now that we're successfully set up here, I'm just gonna talk briefly about this F9 issue. Um, first of all, I'm, I'm, I wanna qualify my statement and say, I've always had good luck with Digitrax products. I've never had any issues with them. Um, but for me, it seems a little bit inexcusable that a product like this can get to the, the customers with uh, an issue with Function 9. I'm sure it was probably one keystroke issue on some line of code somewhere, but it's a little bit disappointing that they weren't able to catch that. It sounds like it was a, obviously it was a um, mass issue because I was able to figure this out through the um, Digitrax Yahoo um, user group. So, well, I guess it's not y y YouTube or Yahoo anymore, it's Groups IO. Nevertheless, I was able to figure out that there was an issue by reading posts in that user group. And even with that, it was within that post that I realized that there was an actual firmware update already from Digitrax to, to correct the F9 issue. So on February 1st, 2019, Digitrax up, uh, released a firmware upgrade or update for the DCS-52. Again, I was a little bit disappointed that I had to read about this through a user group. There wasn't anything on the main Digitrax web page, you know, the main page or anything like that that said, number one, that there was a problem with function nine, and number two, that they'd already released a firmware update. So nevertheless, um, I was able to, to to do that, so to get the firmware update, go to digitrax.com, go to the download section. Um, there's instructions on how to, to load it, but basically to be able to update the firmware on the, on the DCS-52, um, you have to have a USB connection, which I do, and then you have to have the Digitrax sound loader program, which again is a free download from, from Digitrax, and you can see right here on the screen that it's right below the, um, the actual firmware update. So go ahead and download and install this and, and the icon is digi plii 2.2 so this is the updated version of, of that particular program so i'm going to show you the steps i've already updated the firmware on the dcs 52 and it solved the function 9 issue i'm going to walk you through the steps on how i did it in case this is something that you need to do for your product i'm going to warn you i usually put this as a disclaimer in the videos and i do in text but i'm also going to do it through um through my through words too i'm not responsible i'm showing that you this how i did it if you have any questions or issues you need to contact digitrax they have a great customer support center 
um, I'm not going to be responsible if you have any issues trying to do the firmware update yourself. So with that being said, let's go ahead and go through the process. So the first thing you do is just open up the, uh, the, the product here. Um, so you can actually see there are a couple things and I'm going to zoom the camera in here just a little bit. So this is still showing from the last, or for, from the firmware update that I did. First thing you need to do is select the local net port that your device is connected to. On this computer, it's COM7. Um, Digitrax recommends a bit rate of uh, 16457. You download the firmware um, file. It is a D as in dog, M as in mother, F as in Frank file. So it's actually just right here in my downloads folder. So you can see right here, DCS52. Um, they have a date of January 25th, 19. That's a DMF file. We'll go ahead and open that. Once you have that project selected, all you have to do is come down here and hit the start button. I'm not gonna do that because I've already updated the firmware, but that's all you need to do to update the firmware on the DCS52. One thing I'll note, and it's very clear in the instructions, make sure you do not have any other local net devices plugged in any throttles, DCS uh, 64s or anything like that because it's going to send files across the local net network and you don't want to corrupt any files in any of your other devices. So that's the process I did. It went through and it solved the F9 issue. Okay, let's go ahead and open up Decoder Pro here. And so in my original video, unboxing and setting up the Zephyr Express, I, there, there were two things that I did to get Jammer to work, and I don't know which one. It's probably bad troubleshooting on my part. The first thing I ended up doing was I ended up um, re reinstalling the driver for the PR3, PR4. And again, there's instructions on Digitrax website on how to do this. I'm gonna go up here and edit the preferences just to sort of show you what I've got going on here. So um, to set it up here within JMRA, I have Digitrax, local net PR3, the other thing that I did not do correctly, and I know that I did this when I set it up, my serial port for COM7 was incorrect. On my regular layout with my uh, Digitrack Super Chief, the serial port is COM number four, and I did not change that, so I know that that had something to do with the issue, but nevertheless, um, we were just uh, play around with the ports. I mean, usually this is the biggest issue getting JMRI to talk to the Digitrack system is making sure that you have the correct serial port. So if you're having issues with that, this is probably going to be the first place that I would start. So uh, let's just do a real quick test here and I'll show you to verify that this is working. So one of the nice things about JMRI, you can actually toggle the track power on by clicking this button here. When you do that, you notice that the track status indicator on the DCS52 lights up. Let's go ahead and turn that off. So that's indication number one that this successfully is talking to the DCS52. Another way to verify that the connection between JMRI and the DCS52 is valid, you can see I have a locomotive on the programming track, not the main line. I'm going to read the decoder real quick. Let's go ahead and click on new loco click on read type from decoder. Usually takes about 10 to 15 seconds for this to occur. So basically it's gonna read CV7, CV8 to get the ID for the decoder. What I have on the programming track, it's a Walters Proto GP35 and it has a uh, Tsunami decoder in it. It's still reading, I can hear it clicking but it's giving me all of the possible decoders that this could be. So I'm just gonna come up here and I'm not actually gonna select it because this locomotive is already on my roster, but it's Tsunami, Diesel, Walters, GP35. So I would select that and be able to open up the comprehensive programmer to um, program the locomotive. Okay, the very last thing I'm gonna do is just uh, again, demonstrate how this works. I'm going to click power on. You're going to hear the locomotive go through the startup sequence. Uh, I'm going to come up here to actions, click on new throttle. 
This is locomotive 637. We'll set it. So it's muted, the headlights on. I'm gonna click and drag this just a little bit here. So here you can see them toggling the headlight on and off. Um, I'll give it just a little bit of throttle here so you can see it move. So let's reverse, click on forward. So the nice thing about JMRI is you can actually do this. You can set up a throttle um, because the DCS-52 only has, you know, one throttle on it. Um, if you're gonna run two locomotives at a time, this is a way you can do that. Um, I'm not gonna go through any of the functions simply because this particular locomotive, I have completely changed all the CV settings for, and the function settings for the proto throttle. So um, it's not gonna be corresponding F1, it's not the bell anymore, and the usual defaults that we get out of the box. Okay, and one last time just for fun, go ahead and hit track power on my DCS-52. It's powering up. This is locomotive number 637 loco. Function 8, it carried over from the JMRI that Function 8 is enabled. I can disable it right here. F0 is the headlight. Again, we can run trains with it. So, there. After a lot of struggle the last couple days, getting the Function 9 taken care of, getting JMRI taken care of, um, I can officially say this is an, a fantastic product from Digitrax. I love the fact that they built in the USB connectivity. You don't have to get a PR3 or a PR4 to be able to connect your command station to JMRI. You can also get the Digitrax sound loader um, software do the projects that you need to do directly to the, the DCS-52. So thank you for watching this second part of the video and happy railroading.